I know we're probably about a minute early. Here we are coming to you live from one of my favorite parks. We got a beautiful background. Hi. Um, so I know we haven't been on a good schedule lately. We missed doing a live last week. So that's one of our goals is to get on a better schedule of putting out videos and doing our lives. So we're going to be thinking about this this week and coming up with a schedule and putting it out there on our bio so you guys know when everything will be up. Just been a lot of going around with doctor's appointments and just been a crazy week. Um, so we have a few questions people have sent in. And I know some of them might be over a week old and there's just been so much going on with the court case and all the different lives from Megan Fox and the DUI guy and the umbrella guy and everybody's been hot on those lives. So we've been trying to be respectful of that too and stay away from those times that everybody's watching those lives. Hey everybody. Oh, Kodiak, hey, Alaska. Kodiak, Alaska. In the house. Nice. So we're just going to cover a few things. Um, I want to say real quick. Okay. We support all the, the YouTubers that are covering the Jeremy Harris case. It definitely needs to get out there, get yes. the word out there. So we are supporters of everyone who is helping the Hales with this case. Yep, they are so. good people who are generous, and it's terrible what's going on right now. Yep. The legal system is it's shameful, and it's scary. How are you supposed to have a fair trial under these conditions it's really scary right so and i've living in florida i was born in florida living here i've always told people that about the law in florida and sometimes a lot of times it's about who you know and whatnot and it's just shameful and if you don't have a bunch of money to pay you can't fight anything so it's it makes me sad that this is my home state and this yeah. is what goes on and it's really sad especially in levy county i haven't had those experiences in other places that i've lived in the state of florida i grew up in the hollywood fort lauderdale area i lived um, in marion county for quite some years and i've never had these problems anywhere else except for levy county and you know and please yes we appreciate all the prayers for jeremy and george and all of otter creek please keep praying uh, god mm -hmm. will handle this for sure and he's the one who sees everything and knows everything and you can't lie he sees it all so yeah. he will handle it yeah. so um did you have anything else you wanted to say no, right off so. the rip? No. okay so i'm just gonna dive right into some of these questions the first question somebody had asked is what we thought of Don's Bible comment in the last meeting. I was shocked. I just could not believe he said that. Um, rewrite the Bible? Uh, that's, <laughs> that's, that's insane yeah. to even think that. Who's going to rewrite it? Like, there wouldn't be any bias there, would there be? <laughs> the only person that could rewrite it is God. And the he's had the same words, and they've been truthful for all these years there's nothing that needs to be changed in the Bible what does need to be changed is people need to start reading the Bible and living by the Bible that's right. what needs to change so I was I just was shocked when that came out that whole meeting to be honest shocked me I, I almost can't believe he said it and can he really believe what he just said I don't know does he not go home and go oh, you know I probably shouldn't have said that I, I, don't I don't know, know if he does or if he does have some form of dementia. I'm not really sure, but to me it's astounding. It's almost like he's calling God a liar. I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't know if he really understood what he was saying, to be honest. But like I said, that whole meeting shocked me and it's shameful yeah. for people's behaviors. Another question a lot of people have asked is about um, my trip to the Holy Land. And in the future, I do want to compile the pictures into a video. I didn't make too many videos while I was there. I did make a few videos of the rabbi speaking, and I don't know the quality of the sound on some of those because it was a large group of people, and there was lots of groups going on around us. So I will be reviewing those, and I hope to put something together 
um, within the next few months. I can't put an exact date on that, but I hope to do that and talk to you more about that. I would also like to get a book on Israel because you're going through everything so fast and you need a reminder and review. Even our tour guide said that he reads a book on Israel every so often just to refresh his memory about all this stuff. There's so much going on. I really want to go back. I'd love to be able to take Brett with me this time and see more. I really, I, I think you probably could stay there a couple months easy and probably still not see everything. There's so much history. And even while we were there, they were still uncovering things. It was just amazing to see. And then when we came back and I was watching the news and saw that they had found stuff in some of the places that we went. And while we were there, we were watching them working on that so to see a couple months later that they had uncovered stuff was really cool somewhere you had been and you know you can just feel the presence of jesus in the Someone areas in jerusalem right now oh wow that's awesome i love israel it's just it was beautiful over there the people were amazing i didn't feel unsafe at all now this was before all this craziness happened i did go last may as you know and it's sad. It saddens me. Okay. It's okay. So anyway, it does sadden me. So now I'm going to move on to the next subject. Um, as someone asked, who can swear in the new council members? Um, the new council members can be sworn in by the lawyer. I know when I was sworn in, they brought um, somebody from the courthouse, and I can't remember her exact function. Very nice lady who's also running right now. So if you see um, during the election, she's running for the clerk of court, right? Is that what she's running for? So, Mandy, yeah. Mandy Waters. Mandy Waters. Uh, vote yeah. for her, because she yeah. is not corrupt. Okay, um, so that's who can swear in the new council members. Someone else was also asking about Kingsley Lake and that's the lake where we were in Camp Blanding mm -hmm. and that lake is also known as the Silver Dollar Lake and it was named that by the pilots because as they're flying over it's almost perfectly round and it has crystal clear waters and I also read that it is the highest and oldest and one of the purest lakes in the state and they say that it was probably formed by a sinkhole and it's just a beautiful lake pretty much when you're going around there everywhere you're at you can see the lake you're sitting mm -hmm. in your rv eating you could see the lake you're riding your bike all around the campground and the whole base just kind of goes around it so everywhere you're at it's just beautiful mm -hmm. and peaceful and yes a lot of people did comment that we should have went fishing there <laughs> there was yeah. a lot of fish hopping when mm -hmm. we were sitting near the waters and yeah it would be a great place to fish so the fish were ready so maybe next time we can do that so um hey, deborah thomas is in the chat hey mm. deborah we miss you hey guys no we're not in otter creek today today we're at one of Teresa's favorite parks in ocala so that's <laughs> where we are now you can kind of see behind us how pretty look at the beautiful flowers it's really peaceful here so um then people are also asking if you have to be in the military to camp at the bases. That kind of varies from, from base to base. Some of them allow military guests, uh, extended family, like their parents and whatnot can come on and they have to be signed in. And then the sponsor, the military service member or retiree is the sponsor, is responsible for them. So um, yes, some bases allow it and some bases don't. All right, so I guess the best bet would be to go online and check individually with the different bases and find out when you're planning your trip. Another, another funny thing, you know, and this goes out from the Queen of Sharks, as she is known, um, spreading so much misinformation. She doesn't do research, and apparently some of the people that say some of the things she do don't do research either right. but y'all are really good at doing research <laughs> and i know that you guys are know what she's saying is just not true so she 
has been saying that no voting occurred uh, for the brush truck and everybody knows and clearly saw in the meetings that it was voted on um, that I did not disband the fire department. Fire department has been out of service for over 20 years. That's about how old the truck is. I mean, there was even a so. meeting where the chief and another, um, the person who's the chief now, were in an Otter Creek meeting before I was ever on the board. And we were talking with them about the process to have a volunteer fire department. So it wasn't even in play then. So anybody who's been following along knows these things. Um, I, it's been out of play a long time. They were keeping this truck just sitting there in a garage and paying for insurance on it, paying for gas, paying the maintenance man to drive it around every so often. And it was being driven in a parade once a year. That's a waste of money. Why would you? It wasn't keep even it? a town parade. You know, that's was, an it asset. It was the Bible Church parade. Well, yeah, it's for it, it was for the, the for the school's parade. homecoming in Otter right. Creek, but it just makes no sense to have such an asset that is worth something sitting there depreciating when the town could use the money from that in a better way to serve the town. So that just made no sense. So the sun is playing with our lighting here. <laughs> we don't have our tripod, so we're having to hold the camera up here. So we're just going to kind of wing it. <laughs> Deborah asked if we're both sunburned. <laughs> it, I think it's just the way the sun is hitting us. Yeah, the sun is just, just winging is. it here today. So <laughs> bear with us. We're red faced. We're not rednecks. We're red faces. <laughs> I don't know. Um, so um, as far as that's concerned, there there is a lawyer there so everything happening is legal <laughs> is your arm getting tired yeah, i'm switching arms <laughs> <laughs> so um i didn't skip out of town i didn't run out of town no. you know i might have hula hooped out of town <laughs> no but um it, that's things did happen quickly yeah but uh, i mean skipping or running out of town no, means you just left like you know nobody knows anything no. and you just left for she can't serve on the board if reasons. she doesn't live there so when we sold the campground you no longer live there you can't serve as a board member so that and the form six both came out kind of at the same time and um that i just took the library away and the library again was voted out it wasn't getting used. What is the point of housing all those books that were getting eaten by bugs? And yeah. there was roach droppings on them. It's just, it's not sanitary to have in the building. It's not getting used. There's no point to it. So, and that was voted on. There was another thing that I took all the historic stuff out of the building. Newsflash, it's still all in the building. You it's have to there. take these things <laughs> off the wall to paint it, to which paint it. the inside of that place needed a paint job so bad. Years passed, nobody has kept up with the building. When Brett was the maintenance man, we literally had to beg the board to paint the outside of the two buildings, which Brett and I both painted mm -hmm. some years ago. So it's just a shame that that place was not taken care of. The library books were donated. Some went to the prison. Yes. Some went to um, a lot of the local residents. A few of them came and picked them yeah. up. They had dibs. They and, had dibs on what they um, wanted some first. Some bookstores they went to, but it went to many different places and whatever was still in there had gone to the prison. So it went to good use of which it was not getting just sitting there collecting dust. So. Debunked. Debunked, yes. Now here's a funny, funny question. Did Lynette officiate our <laughs> wedding? No. Hales no. Hales no. We got married in the Otter Creek Baptist Church. Pastor Tim officiated our wedding. Correct. Um, I, I, <laughs> that, <laughs> I'll just oh. bite my tongue there. So, and someone asked if there's no quorum, is there a meeting? No, no quorum, there's no meeting. Did they get paid? Oh, thank you. They did not. PDX. Thank you. They did not get paid um, when there is no meeting. Now, when there was a meeting and they walked out of the meeting, 
there was still a meeting, so I'm sure they got paid. Right. I don't think they should get paid when you walk out of a meeting. To me, you're forfeiting your money. And if you miss a meeting, you should not also get paid. That's just ridiculous. <laughs> I would not expect that. And it's just ridiculous. And someone asked in Don and Suss's illegal meeting, he stated that the council must vote on every check that is written. But the funny thing is, when he was mayor, mm -hmm. he wrote a check for over $7,000 that nobody was aware of. It was not voted on. It wasn't even made aware of until they did that audit. And right. Howlin' Jones asked what this was all about. It was even written out of the wrong account. So That's illegal. So he's sitting there saying one thing to all the people and clapping away. Well, that's not what he does when he's in charge. So I don't know what he's talking about there. So some people need to call him on that. It was um, even Mr. Fuller at that illegal meeting was stating that the board members must act in the best interest of the citizens. Clearly that whole thing was not in the best interest of the citizens. Whose best interest was that? Russell Meeks. He's That's the only one interested in that. And he did not look out for the town. It was a non-refundable check. That town does not have that kind of money just to throw in the toilet. Right. And quite frankly, no town of any size should be just throwing their money in the toilet. So He is I, a terrible steward of money. He's made so many bad choices in the interest of what they cost. He to just yeah. sit there and say that he cares about that town as a farce. Yeah. Um, someone else also asked, did we sell our campground because Zim was building a campground? No, no. absolutely not. No. There is plenty enough money in this world for everybody, for the people who want to go further and do things for themselves. There's plenty out there for everybody. Nobody mm. needs to be greedy. Um, it's just ridiculous. You should cheer the people on that are doing good things and support each other, lift each other up. Yeah, the campground so, had 13 sites when we bought it and we expanded it to 24 sites and it is currently today right now it's full yes. so it's set very successful it will remain successful it's it's a mid-range campground and zim is catering to a higher clientele they're two different campground. campgrounds completely. it's going to be different different clientele are going to so, be visiting these campgrounds there's not the competition they're not competing against each other nobody dislikes each other you support each other and that's the way things should work all across right. the world things would be so much better if people would just learn that little secret so it's shameful that people act thank the way you they mary do. thank you um people also want to know where do we see otter creek in the next six months to three years mm. well that absolutely depends who is in charge of otter creek and what is going on there with who's in charge if the people who are interested in the town doing good are in charge i think otter creek is going to be a beautiful place in the next few years it got started on a path towards good when i was on the board and i hope that continues but if the wrong people are in there and just doing the things that they want to do and holding the town back I don't see good things for it. So it all depends who's in there and who's supporting and are the people that live in the town attending the meetings, voting for the right people to be in charge. People have to get involved and show that they care. Otherwise, they're just gonna allow the town to be run poorly. So it's really up to the people who live in that town as to where it's gonna go. I will continue to pray for it to go in the right place since the day I moved into that town I've been praying for it and I won't stop it's a beautiful town it can be even greater and I'm gonna believe that that's the path it's on people also wanted to know has anybody seen Russ drunk regularly or if that was all stories and lies that were made up we see Russ driving around the town all the time, but you can't tell just from looking at him going by if he's drunk or not. Now, I have firsthand knowledge that he does typically in the summer drive around with an open container in the vehicle and he's jumping on it, drinking on a beer. Now, to say he's driving drunk, I can't speak to that. Well, I can tell um, you it's not legal to drink and drive. Yeah. I personally never got that close 
to look into his vehicle. Thank you, Julia. And I, that makes me sick as well. Um, the whole thing is ridiculous, but I never got that close to see his drinking patterns. I've heard from the time I, before I even lived there, when I worked at the post office, I heard from many of the citizens that that was his behavior. So I don't think all the people that have lived there forever would be lying about that. Now, they are not on camera saying a bunch of different things, but those are the things I have always heard from the townspeople about him. So, and then someone asked who is Laura Mott, and it is Laura Mott. And um, Laura Mott used to be on the board at one time she was mayor for a short period before she left the board to run for the commission county commissioner seat which she did not get and that's why the whole one year seat got into play and unfortunately the board at that time did not advertise it correctly during the elections and caused the big mess that they caused they did that themselves by not getting ahead of the situation and advertising it correctly so again i walked into that mess as well so but she is someone who lives in the town and she didn't do anything during her time on the board that i saw i even asked while she was running for the county seat thanks wyatt what good she had done for the town and got no response so my slogan is not for my yeah. So many times when she was when she did come into the uh, the town hall meetings in the years past, um, she's always coming in with a beverage, and I can tell you that beverage it's not Coke. So um, well, I I personally don't know any of that. All I know is I didn't see any good action, so I wouldn't vote for somebody that I didn't see any good action from. Yeah. So and then when you don't come to the meetings, when you're not on the board. Thanks, Juliet, again. That speaks volumes to me, too. And she does not come to the meetings, nor does Stuart, nor does Dan Shannon, nor does Don. None of them, if they're not on the board, they don't attend meetings. And to me, that speaks volumes. Yeah, does that say you care about the town when you don't even show up to the meetings Absolutely and voice your opinions? Not. Absolutely no. not. Uh, when, we, when we weren't on the board, I wasn't on the board. We, we came to meetings We for came years. to the meetings. Yeah. If we missed a meeting, it may have been one. And there was a short period where we did miss a couple of meetings in a row because of the whole mess with Russell where he was starting fights with us during meetings and it was causing so much stress. We quit going to the meetings for a couple months and then we got to a point and said, no, we're not going to be pushed out. We're not going to allow this. So we came back and we didn't he's just a bully and we didn't let him bully us anymore but for a couple of months we did stay away and you can't let that man just do whatever he wants because he will then that goes along with someone asked if i was always interested in politics or did the circumstances in otter creek push me in that right in that direction mm -hmm. and no I, my whole life i've never been involved in politics but what was going on there was wrong and that pushed me to get involved because I didn't see a lot of people standing up in the town for what needed to be done. And they've probably just been so used to being bullied by him all these years that they didn't feel like they had a voice anymore. And I just, I couldn't deal with it anymore. So I wanted to stand up for the people of that town to do what was right and to make a difference. And I'm just hoping that it carries forward. I know people keep asking again, why did I step down? They're saying that you didn't have to file the form six until July or you didn't have to. But you still had to file it. Well, they're saying that right. th some people were confused that if you weren't running again, they thought you didn't have to do it at all. Yes, if you stayed after January 1st, you were required to do the Form 6. Yes. Now, if you weren't running again, you had till July 1st to do it, but you still had to do it. And it was way too, too intrusive. And if you made mistakes on it, there's $20,000 penalties. 
you're telling the world what's in your house that's valued over a thousand dollars it's just ridiculous matter of fact so many people resigned from the position that there was a lawsuit and now i heard just recently that what they're doing is they're exempting the towns under 500 people from having to do the form six and they are delaying it in the bigger towns till after 2025 but it, it's just shameful that they're doing that now after all the people resigned so yeah, the state it, lost at least that last count was 173 and counting i don't know exactly but it was more than right. 173 people and that's just shameful that it took such a great loss for them to do something about it mm -hmm. um, so going forward i hope more good people are in those positions and um, i'm glad for the people that are taking those positions carl and joseph and I, I think good things are going to happen with the right people. Where's Lonnie? Someone was asking you. I haven't seen Lonnie in a while, but he still treats the water plant. He, he just comes and does his thing. He doesn't go to the meetings or anything. He just he shows up um, at, on his own schedule two to three times a week and does the, the monitoring of the water he does the treatments and the filtering of the water and then he goes on about his business and he's very busy i know he does yeah. several towns he does several towns very nice man not just otter creek so if otter creek would unincorporate lonnie would still be treating the water it'd be exactly the same nothing would change about otter creek if it unincorporated the only thing that would change is all the infighting right there wouldn't be any fighting there wouldn't be any board there wouldn't be a reason for a board we would be paying bronson for water and bronson would be monitoring the water yeah, i am It'd surprised be thank you what the hells hey what the hell <laughs> <laughs> that is my mayor <laughs> brett loves that clip so oh, much man, i love it i think he's gonna make it his ringtone <laughs> <laughs> I, I should <laughs> uh someone else asked does biscuit boy work for zim no he does not yeah we just spoke to zim a couple of days ago and he confirmed that he does not work for him so um, I don't know that he works for anybody and I'm just going to throw this out there too. I never saw him picking up any trash or doing any things like that until he started a YouTube channel. So that's all I can say. You can take what you want from that. Uh, we drove near Dead Dog Road the other day and it's full of trash. Mm -hmm. So if that's what it takes for you to do something is a camera and getting paid. I think that is also shameful and um, me and Brett picked up trash there for the whole time we lived there on our golf cart and we never filmed it and never made a big deal about it. I mean that's just what you should do. So that's all I have to say about that and someone else asked if Russ is off the council after this election. Uh, yeah, he did not decide he wanted to run for the election again. So, and from the last posting that I saw up on the board at Town Hall a couple of days ago, which, do you have that on your phone? Yeah, I do. I have to pull that up. Let me see this. So, the last little thing I saw about the posting there posted all the positions and who's running in the election. And when Brett pulls it up, we'll read it to you. And it really clearly defines everything in this post so that there can be no confusion. Okay, it states the, the following. Here it is. I got it blown up so I can read it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Qualifying seats are as follows. Zim Padgett will not have to run in the 24 election. He was voted in as a two-year seat in the 23 election. Two seats open for a one-year term. Note. In 2025 running, it will be our odd year election, meaning there will be three seats open for a two-year term. The qualifying candidates for the one-year seats were Joseph Pate and Carl Hughes. They will be seated in the two one-year seats. Both candidates were unopposed, therefore both candidates will take their seats for the, for the new term stated. Two seats open for the two-year term. Note, these seats will not come up for re-election again 
until 2026. Qualifying candidates for the two-year seats were Laura Mott, unopposed, Don Severino, unopposed. So, um, Can I just make a note of why that happened? Stuart Stewart stepped down out of the position so that these two people could be seated and there would not have to be an election and they would be unopposed. So that is why that is occurring. Stuart Stewart stepped down. So the board's going to be full. Um, due to one of the qualifying candidates for the two-year seat withdrawing, which was Stuart Stewart, the remaining two candidates listed above will take their seats for the term. That's Laura and Don. Therefore, the scheduled election on April 4th has been canceled, has been canceled. because there does not need to be an election because there's only two one-year terms up and two two-year terms and all four people running. There needs to be no election. Joseph and Carl will be assigned the one-year seats and Don and Laura will be assigned the two-year seats. So no, Russell will not be in that election. Now, I can tell you that I have a suspicion of what will happen there. I feel from what has happened in the past that I've seen is that either Laura or Don will step down so that Russell can try to take their seat in the future. I'm pretty sure, in my opinion, that is going to happen. Don did that. We had Russell blocked out of the board and he gave up his seat. Yet yeah, during an election, it was voted where Don was going to be in there and Russell didn't win. But so Russell could have a seat, Don stepped down immediately and never took his place on the board. So I would not be surprised if that does happen again with either Laura or Don, with one of them stepping down because it seems like some people are very easily controlled by him. Mm -hmm. So that is my take of what is going to happen. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. You know, maybe Don will make a bet about it. And the new board members don't have to be wait to be seated till May. They can be seated in April since there's no election. Correct. Correct. Yeah. yeah. So we'll see what happens with all of that. Um, I think it's just shameful all the scheming going on. So what else was another question? Um, is Russ this unhinged in real life as he is on camera? Well, I can speak personally, um, just thinking back of when Brett was the maintenance man, there was a couple of times when I was on the golf cart with Brett and we went to speak to Russell about something and if he is upset, he is red in the face he just spews off some stuff. He goes from zero to 60 in no time flat. And just the way he talks to you is really ridiculous. He just starts yelling and has a tone about him. And he he's a, just a nasty bully. He has a temper. He has a temper problem. And he, I have seen that firsthand. And he's a bit of a coward. He won't come to you and talk to you about it. He'll, he'll make a phone call, try to call in a favor. That's how he does things. He does things back door. So someone's asking too again about the seats. My seat and Gail's seat go to Joseph and Carl. So they will take the remainder of our term of one year each. And that's, and it's all drawn out on this piece of paper. So. Yeah, in the past the seats, one and two year seats were not assigned, which was kind of illegal. Well, Those seats needed to be assigned. Well, it's it all depends on the ordinances and how it's wrote. Right, right. But they should have absolutely assigned that one year seat when Laura stepped down and had it in the election. It would have saved so much stuff. But right, right. that you know, right now Zim is the acting mayor until the next election, so he takes that over. And so right now you have no mayor. There's no mayor until the board is right. seated, There's and then an, the board will elect the right, new mayor. Right, but Zim is the acting mayor. He's the acting mayor. Yeah. So, and someone else also asked, how did I keep my cool with Don and Sus were so disrespectful to me during the meetings? And I can tell you, I prayed a lot. 
I prayed before the meetings. I prayed during the meetings. I prayed over that building. I, like I said, I prayed about Otter Creek from the moment I started living there and seeing how things were and still pray, but it took a lot of prayer, a lot of deep breaths, and I just, I couldn't believe their behaviors. And I just don't see that anything they do is in the best interests of the town. Somebody asked if I have children because I'm so used to dealing, I dealt so well with the children on the board that I must have a lot of children. I do have one child. <laughs> so one grown child. <laughs> and he is um, about 30 years old now. He does not live in the state of Florida anymore. He moved to North Dakota recently, but um, he is grown and um, yeah, they act like children. They really do. And that is shameful. And in my opinion, you can see by their behaviors, their lack of care for the town, them walking out of that meeting and not seating those board members to me shows they don't care about the town. It's just shameful. And it, it definitely is a good versus evil thing going on. And you can clearly see where the evil is and what's going on. It's no surprise. Um, it, it makes me sad that these people talk the way they do and it's just clear they want to say oh we can't have outsiders moving into our town telling us what to do with this and that but yet they want to tell the outsiders how to live and what to do so it's just so one-sided it's unbelievable and I don't know I didn't come in there with any wrecking ball and moving buses out of people's yards or doing anything like that. So I was just trying to make the town better. You know, people were trying to say that you were going to come in there and and you were going to do everything I say. And well, they don't know you very well, do they? But no. You were going to do every. If she did everything I say, half the town wouldn't be there. But um, the mayor doesn't have that kind of power. They can't yeah, just go off, in and. As, you have to establish an ordinance. You have to then hire enforcement. You have to have code enforcement. Everybody right, knows, yeah. all the people who live there right now know, well, there's no code enforcement. There's no code enforcement. How many campgrounds, illegal campgrounds, do you have being run right now? I've seen uh, one, two, three, maybe about three different campgrounds that shouldn't be campgrounds. They're people's yeah. residents, and they have RVs sitting all over Trashy their property. Trashy RVs all over so their property. So obviously, if there was code enforcement, that would not be that happening. That wouldn't be happening. So, and that town absolutely needs some code enforcement. And here's and what that I would don't... be one of the biggest arguments for unincorporation yes. because they cannot afford to do the code enforcement and the things necessary that need to be done. And you can go to different places in the county and there's still things going on with people having garbage in their yard. You know, there's only so many people they can hire to do the job in that big of a town. So some of the people say, I don't want to be unincorporated because I don't want people telling me what I can do in my yard. I, you know, well, you know, if it they didn't want to be overboard. told what they can do in their yard, then why didn't they move into the county? But why I mean, did they move into a township? It's nothing out of the way. They're not going to, it's not going to be like, oh, your yard has to look like it's Disney World. It's not like that. No. But um, it's just whew, but so when, much misinformation. But when you live in a dump, there should be some personal People standards. should have some pride. Some pride in where they live. No? And and some people, I get it. Some people are elderly and they need help doing stuff. And we also offered that way before I was on the yeah. board. Yeah. I was helping, volunteering, going through the town and helping clean up the town and offered those services to people in need. We tried to get together with some different residents, Zim and the even the Matthews were talking about it trying to help the people who needed cleanup but they didn't come forward and ask for anything you can't make people do it you can only offer it if people don't take you up on your offer there's nothing you can do about it but it was there and it was offered for the people who needed help so um and people ask are people still under investigation or has that been settled yes people are still under investigation the state is very slow in doing the things they need to do um, and then you have so much mix with uh, different people's family members being county commissioners and as you can all see there seems to be some 
corrupt favoritism going mm -hmm. on throughout the county. I don't know if that's part of any of it. So uh, all they these drag. things make you wonder. And again, yeah. people also need to get involved in the county and what's going on in the county. Because as I've heard and read through some of the other things, there's people that are upset about some of the other people in the county who are on the, our commissioners, excuse me, doing corrupt things as well. So people need to get more involved and see what else is going on. So there's just a lot of things. People ask what my biggest challenges were as a mayor. <laughs> and I have to say my biggest challenge was being on a board of people who were not there for the right reasons and wanting the town to progress forward into a good town and doing good things for the town. They just wanted to be on the board to bicker and fight or control the water or get different favors that they wanted from people. Mm -hmm. They weren't there for the right reasons at all. They were there to serve themselves. It's good versus evil, yes. And that was the hardest part is you're going in there, you're having this big battle. It's like you're preparing for the Super Bowl. Every meeting you feel like you're going into this big battle. You're gonna be arguing with people. You're dealing with a bunch of children. And it would have been great if you had people all there for the same reason, wanting good things for the town. But that wasn't the case. And that was my biggest, oh, get real. Um, that was my biggest <laughs> problem as a mayor is not having people wanting the same things. Um, and there's just been so many lies being spread by different people. And some of the questions that people ask with the different people's lies I'm not even gonna address because some of it is so nauseating look at the people and look at how they're living and the problems they're causing do a little investigative work it's just it's sad and people also want to know about how Brett dealt with them disrespecting me when on on the board how did he keep his cool so it was hard i mean you have to keep your cool i mean it's not you don't want to stoop down to their level they're already making themselves look foolish so you just video it as we've been trying to video it and let them hang themselves yeah. give them enough rope to hang themselves yeah well you shouldn't stoop to their level that's for sure right. it's hard though it's really it is hard. hard it's really hard and a lot of people don't understand that and they like to make a judgment on jeremy about the way he's handling things and i don't think anybody could speak on these things unless you were in that situation and we've been in that situation for longer and dealt with these things and there's some sick people and the things they're doing just wreaking havoc on people's lives that live on that town and causing such problems and when they were doing that to us we ignored it and we didn't address any of it and just left it alone but do you think it stopped no it just continued and it still continues to this day. And it's very sickening that people choose to live that way. So Jeremy is very patient. I don't think I could have been as patient being in his position and being able to deal with the things that he can on a monetary level. I didn't have that same factor involved, but if I was in his shoes, I'm absolutely sure that I couldn't have been that patient. Uh, it's just, it's sickening the way some of these people want to play games with other people's lives. And it's very hard and it's very stressful to keep your cool. And you're praying for them to change. You're praying for people's hearts to soften. And you're just praying that you can continue to do the right thing and be silent. Um, to keep it in enough not to stoop down to their level and it's very very hard so th that has been a huge challenge but it's it's all a load of lies and it's just sad that that's the way people want to live when they should be putting their focus on the things they claim are important to them so and you gotta remember why you're at a town hall meeting you're there for the town you're not there for your personal agendas and I don't like them so I'm going to do this and I'm going to walk out of the meeting so they can't have a meeting 
Those are games. Yeah. Those are childish yeah. games. And people were asking, why was no... that meeting adjourned with three members there? Did they need to be sworn in? Yes, the other members needed need to, be to be sworn, sworn in, in before they could have that meeting. And to me, again, that just shows how little Russell and Don care about that town that they just walked out like that. So, you know, just look at the people and look at what they're doing and looking at what they're saying. And it's very easy to see who's on the right and who's on the wrong and mm -hmm. what's going on. And I tried for so long speaking to all these different people and trying to get them on the right side of things, praying for them. And I was always belittled by them, uh, laughed at by them, trying to get any of the public information when Mary was the clerk for year and a half to two years begging for things and I couldn't get any information and just talk to me like I'm the littlest little thing I offered to come in and volunteer to help straighten out the files every time I tried to help they tried to block me they didn't want me in the office they did so much even I'm offering to come in and volunteer that they hired to pay somebody illegally hired somebody mm -hmm. just to block me out of coming in there because they didn't want me to see what was really going on it was appalling to see what was going on in that office when I got in there I never expected to see that much of a mess I don't know how that office was being run in that condition the state of Florida should come in there and shut it down yeah, I'm I'm pretty disappointed at the the lack of agency response, the lack of uh, law enforcement. My experience with the campground and the lack of law enforcement. When you call them, they don't do anything. So this doesn't surprise me. The problems that Jeremy's having with with law enforcement, code enforcement, there just isn't none. You almost have to leave a body behind for them to do something about it. It's sad to say that, but that's about where we're at. Um, it's very and, and sad. Teresa, as mayor, she, you would think as mayor, hey, um, the biggest thing you have is contact. You should have backdoor contacts. You have private cell numbers to other, you know, mayors. Call me if you need help. You know, and some have been, you know, helpful. Um, you call and, and your state representatives and um, Kat Kamak and, and the others, you call and you reach out to them. You, you reach out to the attorney general's office, Ashley Moody's office. You reach out to the governor's office and you don't get any response. And I don't know if it's, it's just because of, Is it because they don't care? Or is it because, you know, the, the mess with this whole country right now, all the different things going on in the state. Otter Creek is just a little place. Nobody has time to worry about it. You know, I don't know what the exact answer of that is. You know, I, I don't want to think that they don't care. I, I don't want to think that everybody's corrupt. I don't want to think those things at all. So, but they'd be doing a town a favor if they'd come in and unincorporate it. There'd be no more fighting. Yeah, there'd be no more fighting. There'd be no more fighting. I mean, why does anybody want to live in all that mess with all the fighting? And the water's still going to get taken care of. Yeah, Lonnie will so, still be the water guy. It's just shameful that people want to keep the town incorporated for their own personal It's just a personal reason so that they can play games with people. I don't know. That's just so, sick. Let's let's move forward. Let's say we uh, Zim has a three two majority on the board, and we move into May and June, July. Do you think Russell goes around and starts a petition to unincorporate the town because he's not in power? Oh yeah, <laughs> I'll sign it. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, I think if if he's not in control, then he absolutely wants to unincorporate. We've yeah. already seen that in the past where he headed that up but didn't follow through. He didn't follow through. So. And it's, and it's got to go to a ballot, and it's got to be voted on by the town. So it's it's a hard thing to do. You got to get fifty one percent of the people to agree to right. it. Right, and you and know a some, good a good portion of the town just doesn't care enough one way or the other. And a lot of people and, just stay inside their houses, and whatever's going on is whatever's going on. I've heard in the past from some of the people that have lived there forever that he would just come and shut people's water off if they weren't doing what he wanted yeah. done and all these different stories and you know I guess either they're that afraid of him and they're going to continue to be that afraid of him or if there's some kind of just loyalties maybe 
I mean, there's probably a variety of different reasons, but... Let me chime in here. Someone's saying something about, do you really want the county to come in? It's not like the county's going to come in with an iron fist. They're just going to do some of the, you hope that they do some of the things. Because even in the county where they're supposed to be, where they are the regulators of the people living in the county, there's a lot of those things not being followed up. We deliver mail and we go to rural areas that are in the county outside the city, but they're serviced by the city post office. We deliver packages. We deliver don't, packages, don't not too. mail, packages. But we go in places where we see, man, he's got like four or five dumpy trailers on his property and nobody's enforcing this. They live in the county and the county should be enforcing it. So do I think if the county took over and enforced things in Otter Creek, things would change? I'm doubtful. I don't think much would change, to be honest. I think it would be the same. But at least people, the residents could say something. Well, think, and if enough people made enough noise, right, that's they'd what be it's forced about, the to noise. come in and do something. That's what it's about. That's what it is. The loudest, you know, what do they say? But, the loudest bird gets the worm or something? I don't know. But, but the loudest... Uh, the squeaky the, wheel gets the grease. The, the biggest there problem there is the good old boy system and the relations with so many of the different people. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if you can get anything changed there or not, or how long that's going to take, how many people move here from other states and get involved. It didn't get this way overnight, and it's not going to get fixed overnight. No, but the people who have lived there forever clearly are okay with how things are, or they just look the other way and say, And you say, know what they uh, always say? It's always been this way. It's always been this way. Does that way. mean it can't change? Does that yeah. mean it can't be better? But they don't want to put in the effort oh, the to do effort. anything. And you know what, too? Sometimes when you put yourself in that position, you have people that start attacking you and try to knock you out as you can see going on right now for the people who are trying to stand up to do the right thing and trying to have the right thing done what's happening to them so a lot of people don't want to put themselves out there to have to deal with that coming in their face yeah. so they'd rather be sitting off to the side looking the other way and saying oh this isn't right but I'm just gonna be quiet about it because I don't want all this wrong stuff happening in my life i don't want people to start attacking me and this and that so they just sit over there quietly and try to stay under the radar and just let all the bad stuff go on so there's a lot of that unfortunately yeah. so people don't realize that the power is in the people and when the people stick together to do the right things god is with you and he's gonna see the right things through he's gonna make sure the good stuff goes on He's the one who can do all, sees all. So good people stick together and don't look the other way. Right. The voice of the good people is much louder than the voice of the bad people. There is more good people than bad people. So please stick together. Right now we are working on a home base. Well, I don't know mm -hmm. if we've decided on a home base yet yeah right now um we have family in chiefland and that right now is our home base so to speak uh, until we find something that we like better so our residency is still in florida we haven't changed it from otter creek um we'll be hitting the road soon we'll be hitting the road soon we're kind of waiting for a That's couple things that's my mayor thank you <laughs> Love you guys. Yeah, we love you guys. We appreciate you guys. Um, you guys go out there, support the Hales. Um, they're on the right side of this thing. and They absolutely are. We trust that God's going to have his hand in it, and all the corruption yep. is going to get exposed as it is. Everybody keep praying for the right things to praying happen. Praying for the right things, the keep right people. Keep standing up for the good things and stick together. Love on each other. Cheer each other on. Do the right things. The good will come out in the end the darkness is always going to get the light shine on it so be part of the light and yeah. we can only fix these things together together we are strong so i don't know if you have anything else you want to add you go through all your notes all your questions <laughs> i think so <laughs> we I, actually write them down on a piece of paper and a pen, i'm so, so old school <laughs> yeah we're a little old school plus we don't know when we're going to be able to do the live because our living situation isn't really conducive um so we have to just find a spot and do it I know. now once we're on the road though we'll yeah. be able to well, establish we need to establish a schedule yeah, this a schedule. week i've been trying to nail him down on that this week so maybe 
you know, we could get yeah. together on that. I'm a list person. I like to be organized and Brett's kind of like, let's just wing it. So <laughs> we have a little bit of a hey, management up. problem here. Go buckle up, buckle up. <laughs> buckle up. So, so we support all the YouTubers out there helping the Hales get the story out. Um, we appreciate all the attorneys that are putting in their two cents worth. We definitely appreciate all the exposure to the good and the light that's being shown. We back we back everything that's going on on the good so, side. I think it's funny the new movement <laughs> buckle up buttercup because working at the yep. post office for all the years we always used to say <laughs> suck it up buttercup. Right. And, uh, <laughs> now it's buckle up buttercup. <laughs> So, yep, postal workers, it's hard work, so and yeah. we would always tell each other, suck it up. Suck it up. Suck it up. But, yeah, everybody buckle up, and the good people, they're, they're just going to come out on top. God is seeing everything. He's with us. Just have the faith. Keep on praying. Do the right thing. So, with our travels, we're hoping to get up into Alaska in May. Weather uh, dictates a lot of that. When breakup is up there and the ice starts to get off the road, we'll start heading that way. Yeah, May is um, my birthday month, so. I know that sounds late, but when you're going over the uh, the Rockies in Canada, it snows up there. It can snow up there in the summer, so you have to get through there when the you know when the when the storms are done. So um, typically, it doesn't. All the snow doesn't clear the Fairbanks area until about May anyway, April, May, June, June. I've seen snow on July 4th. Wow. up there so it didn't stick but it, I've it never did seen snow. snow yet so i'm in for a lot of new things so, when i get there that's going to be the best birthday yeah. present ever so when we do pull out of florida we kind of plan on going up towards uh, up through north carolina into virginia for a little bit way stay a week or two up in virginia and then head west maybe into tennessee and up into ohio um, we want to maybe look at some property in tennessee as a possible homestead uh, homestead but we want to be near a base and I think only Fort Campbell um, that I'm aware of. I'm not familiar with the Navy and the Air Force bases in Tennessee, but I can look them up. Um, but that's kind of something in the back of our mind, but it's not on the front burner. Um, yeah, we'll just see what we see we'll when see we're traveling happens. around. And hopefully we see something nice. And yep. got to go to Ohio and visit my sister and my yep. nieces and nephews. And Who knows, we might stop in and see the Hales if they're up there. Maybe so. If they're not, might have to catch them on the way back. <laughs> yep. Yep. Either way, you got to make time for the good people yep. and spend time with your family and friends. So that's what life's about, getting together, helping each other. Yep. So I'm glad that we can do that. No, I'm not from Florida. I'm from Virginia. But I was military, moved all around, retired out of Alaska, and made my way down to Florida. So I've been here six years. That's wow. it. Wow six years i've been here forever oh yeah. thank, thank you thank you sam well guys without any further ado yeah i guess we better hit the road and we're gonna, we're gonna have to head back to levy county here shortly levy county no levy county <laughs> don't you miss it Hey, we're in Marion County now, but it's been a pleasant... I know. I love visiting yeah. Ocala. I really miss Ocala. I had so much fun here. I was much healthier when I lived here, thanks to all the parks and all the good things there is to do here. So Someone that's another asking. thing I need to get back on my goal list. I didn't do my yearly goals this year, and I think it's very important. Hi, Terry. I know that's where you are. <laughs> <laughs> I'm jelly, but... um. I need to get back into working out again and taking better care of myself because yeah, I look at pictures of before living in Otter Creek and after Otter Creek and there's a significant difference. So we need to get back into that healthier state. Yeah. So I'm I looking agree. forward to that. So yeah. I grew up on a 70 acre farm outside of Ashland, Virginia, and I went to Mechanicsville. Not, well, it's called Mechanicsville High School now. But it was Lee Davis High School. It was the Lee Davis Confederates. And it was built near the Battle of Cold Harbor for you Civil War buffs. A lot of mm -hmm. Civil War history in Virginia. So there are a lot of battlefields I want to show you, like around Petersburg and all that. So there's a lot of history there in Virginia I want to show you. That'll be cool. So that's where I grew up. And then I went in the military right after high school. Uh, I was 18. Went, I mean, five days after graduation, I was in basic training, Fort Leonard Wood, Missouri eating some sand out there 
and uh, on from there. <laughs> so that's my history. Yep. All right. Um, well, hey, it'll be an interesting trip. I can't wait to see all the sites and meet a lot of good people. And uh, it'll be yeah. great. Yeah, we enjoy talking to you. And we hope yeah, to get... I love talking to everybody. I like when we get to meet everybody. Yeah. It's so cool. Um, y'all are the fam so yeah. we love y'all and it's been great meeting the people we've met at the different what the hails events and we look forward to meeting more people in the future and just spreading positivity and love to everybody yeah. so all right well we'll see y'all soon see y'all later thank you bye bye